So I promised that I would do a tutorial video about how to install Shove for Lemur, which is the push emulation that Wool just released on the Lion forums. And it's a little tricky how to get it set up, so I wanted to walk you through how to do it in the quick and easy way so that you won't have to go through all the frustration that I did. So, you'll need a couple things first. If you don't have Lemur for iPad, you need to download that in their Lemur editor from their website. You also need the Shove Gizmo, which you can get off their user library or from my description link in the YouTube. You also need this push tutorial video RAR. You will also need a software called Loop MIDI. All the links are in my description. So once you get Loop MIDI, you need to create two ports. You need to create push in and push out. So you put in the name of the port and then you hit the plus and then it adds the port. So once you've got those two ports, that's good. Now you need to set up the uh, Lemur Daemon. Thing. I find it's easiest to do it right from the iPad. So you go into Lemur, go into more settings, and then you have MIDI target zero. So you want from push in to push out. That's the configuration in there. So now we need to go through and install uh, CliffX and the modified Python handshake scripts that deal with the, the push and, and Lemur. So we need to go into your Ableton install directory. On Windows 7, uh, the default is C, Program Data, Ableton, Live9 Suite. We're looking for this Resources folder. And this Resources folder is the MIDI Remote Scripts folder. Um, this control, uh, this contains all the information for like your APC or your push or all the different controllers. So once you've got that open, get a separate window with uh, my push tutorial video RAR and then extract that. And what's in here is the CliffX and the push folder. So um, what you need to do is move these into your MIDI remote script folder. But you will already have a push folder in there. So what I would recommend that you do is once you find your MIDI remote script folder, add it to a RAR file or something and just save it as a backup. And then go in and you won't have uh, CliffX unless you've already installed CliffX. Um, so you should just be able to drop CliffX in here. And then for the push, delete your original push folder and substitute my push folder. This way, any of your other devices won't get messed up by this process. You're just inserting two new things. So, once that's done, you should be able to go into your Lemur editor. Well, actually, you should go into Ableton first at this point. Once you've got all that stuff set up, you need to go into Ableton and look at your preferences. Gotta wait for my Ableton to load. All right, so open up your preferences. And your first control surface is gonna be push. You want the input set to push out and the output set to push in. You also need to have CliffX selected as a control surface. Do not put anything in the input output. It just needs to be selected as a control surface. And ignore this APC40 stuff. That's just my own, that's just my own thing. If you have your own controllers, uh, get this set up first, and, and just with push and CliffX, and get that all stable, and then add your other controllers in. That's the way it worked for me. Uh, in terms of the MIDI ports and track sync remote, for your input, push input, you want track and remote enabled. And then for your output, you want track and sync enabled. Uh, sync may be needed for you, may not. Um, this setup works, which works great for me right now. So once that's all set up, you can go into your Lemur editor, load your shove gizmo. I'll do that first. So you find your shove gizmo and you load it, and then you sync up your iPad, which is going to send this template to the Lemur. It'll take a moment, and then it'll connect, and then it should be working. Uh, a good way to see if it's working is if you hit one of the root notes, the blue keys. If the other one shows up in green, that means the script is probably working. You can also just hit browse, and then you should see instrument rack and drum rack. So I'll just load up a 909 kit real quick just to show you that it does work. And it loaded up a kit. And so if I pads, it triggers all those different things. I can get a quick loop going. Yeah, so I mean you can you can do all your drum programming and stuff there. All the functions work. Undo, delete, double quantize, all that stuff. I can hold down quantize and turn my record quantization on and change uh, 
you know, it's, if it's like eighth notes or sixteenth notes, I can add an add, aud add in automation or make a new clip. All the different things work. The only thing that doesn't work is uh, selecting the clip workflow if you hold down user. It's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. Um, if you need some help getting going with push and all the concepts and how to make chords and how to do the neat drum programming tricks, I highly suggest you look up 30 Days of Push on Google or YouTube. It's a, a series by Josh Spoon, and it's a really, really great series. It shows you all the little intricacies with push, and that'll really get you going with a good vocabulary of how to use the system. Uh, so hopefully this is helpful for you, and you don't have to spend too much time getting this going. Cheers.